medical devices is another uh, big area. We've had a number of consents in, in, in there, in, including catheters and breast biopsy systems, uh, centrifugal vacuum evaporators, uh, a lot of high tech stuff. And there, um, you know, I guess my takeaways from that is that these are intensely fact specific inquiries. We're really looking for that uniqueness of competition between uh, medical devices. Um, and so, highly, highly fact specific requires a lot of investigation. Some is more challenging than pharma because I think we, you know, we have to really do a lot of digging to figure out how the products work and how they, and how they interact. Um, Again, there typically these types of mergers can be fixed with a remedy. And each of those uh, four cases that I laid out, we actually had the divestiture of a product line to, to remedy the competitive harm. Um, last but not least, and probably one of the more controversial areas is, uh, is patent settlements. Um, we have, uh, for some time, uh, been looking into agreements amongst pharmaceutical companies to reduce generic competition. Um, we had the Warner Shilcott case, which I, uh, I won't get into much here. It wasn't a patent settlement case, but a very important one from our perspective in terms of the types of agreements that we go after, uh, where there is an attempt to try and limit generic competition. Um, we, uh, you know, as, as, you, as you know, um, have been you know, pursuing these types of cases for some time. Um, again, uh, like hospital deals, we have faced uh, some, uh, some setbacks. Uh, the sharing and tamoxifen decisions, uh, we, know we think were decided wrongly, but really seem to give much more credence to the validity of patents um, and that you know, we should rely on the patents. Uh, and, and really, antitrust has a limited, uh, limited place there. We could not uh, you know, disagree with that more uh, and, and certainly have, uh, have, been, have been really ready and willing to, to challenge that. Um, in addition to challenges, which I'll talk about, we've also been very supportive of legislation in the area uh, to make these types of agreements uh, unlawful. Pretty rare for us to do that. Um, I think you know, typically we get a little nervous when Congress gets involved uh, in terms of, uh, of setting antitrust policy. Here we think of these unique circumstances with Hatch-Waxman, which really is a very unique set of circumstances with incentives uh, that, that probably, you know, Hatch-Waxman created them, Congress did that, and perhaps Congress should be the one to, uh, to fix it. And so we do support that legislation. Um, we are not, however, waiting for that legislation to happen. Um, we just filed uh, last month the Cephalon case which is the first patent settlement case post-sharing for us, um, and one that uh, we're very excited about and, and moving forward on. Um, I guess the, the general observations, real quick, and I'll conclude, is, uh, is that we're committed to continue to try and stop these anti-competitive agreements. Um, uh, another example of where I think we, we are not going to allow some of these defeats to stop us. Um, we really are trying to, uh, to do what we think is right. Um, we're looking for good cases. Um, I would not assume just because Cephalon came up that that's it. Um, I think we're, we're incredibly motivated to find the right cases. Obviously, we're not looking for any case. We're looking for the right case with the right evidence. And I think, uh, you know, stay tuned, uh, stay tuned on that. The other thing I would say, too, is that by virtue of uh, the new MMA Act, uh, parties have to submit these patent settlements to us. And so it's almost like Hart Scott Rodina. We actually get to see them. And we have a group that looks at them very closely, and so certainly no one should assume uh, that, they can, uh, that they can get by or try and hide these. Um, lastly, and, uh, what I would say is that what's really interesting, too, is I think we're looking at how these patent settlement cases really might impact uh, uh, Section 7 analysis and mergers. Um, you know, back in general dynamics, uh, the court recognized that perhaps IP might have a place in terms of evaluating the loss of competition between two merging parties, especially when the target has potentially patent liability by infringing the acquiring party's uh, intellectual property in a way that may make them a, an illegitimate competitor. And, and we have seen more of that argument before the FTC, one that we haven't been very uh, receptive to, but one we've seen. Um, and I'll conclude there. <laughs>